Um, I want to talk to you today about um, what the Holy Spirit has instructed me to talk about. And I have, you know what, i got to get my other notes out here. I have a couple reasons I feel like in my spirit, um, just being in fellowship with the Lord of why, uh, why it is that I want to speak on some of these things today. But I want to talk to you today about long life. Everybody say long life. And um, I, some of my motivations that I've been fellowship with the Lord and just kind of searching my heart as to why he wanted me to speak this today. Um, here's a couple reasons why. Number one, I want you to finish your course with joy. Amen. Uh, the Lord is coming back soon. Amen. And I want you to be able to finish your course with joy. Everybody say that with me. Say, I'm going to finish. Amen. Um, I... There was another reason, and this is one that was kind of, the Lord really touched me with, and it was really specifically directed to some of our older saints that are connected here at the ministry. Um, the Lord's been stirring me for a couple of weeks about this, and I, you know, somebody said, we all know the verses, nobody knows the day or the hour when the Lord's going to return, but uh, I believe, and just in light of recent things that have happened, that he is coming back soon. Amen. You think, is it safe to say, I mean, that the Lord's coming back? Amen. I don't think we're going to get to, we're, we're in Star Wars before the Lord comes back. I think he's going to come back before the Death Stars, you know, all that stuff's coming to pass. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like the Lord wants to speak somewhat, not only, but in part some things to some of our older believers. I say older, I'm like 50 and older, you know, 50 and over that the Lord wants to give you a foundation this morning for believing him for long life. Amen? And I want to say uh, from the gate that you don't have to die of some sickness and disease. Amen? Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, New King James Version. It says, uh, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Amplified says, do not be conformed to this world or what? This age. Don't be fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, be changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals, its new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good, acceptable, and perfect in his sight. For who? For you. So how do we, obviously we've used this verse many times, many people know this verse, but the thing we say is do not be conformed to this world, right? But be transformed, how? We've got to get the way God thinks in us, right? And it's not God's will for us to suffer with sickness and disease, and that's not what I'm preaching on today. It's not God's will for us to die young, right? But it's like I said here in my notes, you can't, you don't beg God for long life. You believe God for long life. Amen? I believe there's a lot of people, their life has ended before was necessarily what we say called God's timing. Amen? Death is an enemy of God. Satan is an enemy of God. Satan goes around stealing, killing, and destroying. So we do see a lot of ones that have uh, died prematurely. Uh, and But we know, even in death, we still have victory, right? So no matter how we go, no matter when we go, we still win, right? But I'm specifically talking about finishing your course here, doing the will of God while you're on the earth, right? And for that reason, I need you to stick around a little bit longer. Amen? I need you to make it a little bit longer. I need you to believe God to live a long and healthy life, right? Because God needs you. Amen? We, we, we sometimes lose a whole generation because they die too soon. Amen? So we need to extend now, receive and believe and extend our faith for, for a long life. Amen? Just, let's just say it right out of the gate. Just say, I'm going to live a long life. Amen? I don't have this verse up there, but uh, it said David. David of all people. The warrior, man, he was out there in battle constantly. Can you, can you see like a William Wallace, Braveheart, you know? Uh, you know, he's out there in all those battlefields, you know, just and, and God protected him all those years. Amen. And the Bible said David died old and full of days. 
Amen? We all know, uh, I don't know if you could skip ahead, Patty, down to uh, Psalms 91, uh, a familiar verse, uh, verse 16. It says, uh, man, I got a lot of pages of notes up here. Good Lord, child. I get all these notes. Psalms 91, verse 16, it says, with long life. Everybody say, long life. Long life. He said, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Say it one more time. Say, long life. Amen. I want to give you a couple thoughts. So it's not, let's not conform to the world on this subject. It's important. Amen. One of my confessions that I've been confessing for, oh, man, probably 15 years. I've been confessing. It's on my list of 100 things that I talk about. I say I'm going to see my great, great grandchildren doing the will of God from their heart. That's one of my confessions I say on a regular basis. Amen. Oh, I lost some of you on that one. Don't you want to be around? Amen. I'm just going to speak by the Spirit this morning because I don't feel like I'm much drawn to my notes right now. Amen. Somebody said, yeah, but the Bible says we're promised 70 or 80 years. Yeah, but I've heard this taught, and I actually did my own studying on it. Let's, let's look at that quickly, Patty, if you can find that. That's in Psalms 90. I want to I I show you something real quick. Psalms 90. I'm going to give you a second to find that. It's after Deuteronomy 30. Got it? So it says in verse 7, for we've been consumed by your anger. Verse 7, we've been consumed by your anger and by your wrath. We're terrified. Verse 8, you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins. Everybody say secret sins. In light of your countenance, verse 9, for all of our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. Verse 10, then listen to this. The days of our life are 70 years, and if by reason of strength, they're 80. Okay? Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Verse 11, who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. Verse number, oh, I love this verse, number, uh, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So if you study this, Psalms 90, how many, how many have ever heard that verse? 70 years if by strength, reason of strength, 80, okay? We've used that verse. We've been pre-programmed. Religion has got that verse in us real good. But what, what, what we don't preach is that Israel was in a backslidden state. Israel was backslidden. They weren't serving God. They were living in sin. They weren't keeping God's statutes, right? So then whoever's penned this psalm said at that time, while Israel was in rebellion to God, they were given or living only 70, if by reason of strength, 80 years. Amen. So if you look over in, I know some of you know where I'm going, but whatever. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, I'm going to give you a moment to find that because I want you to see it. Some of you need to write these verses down. Genesis chapter 6, Genesis 6, tell me when it's up. Verse 3, New King James, it's towards the very bottom. So it says this, and the Lord said, everybody, oh, this is so good. Somebody say, the Lord said. Now, who said that other Psalms 90? Some say, yeah, but that's God's word. Yeah, but that was, they, they were talking about the day and age they lived in. I got God's word right here. This, this is God speaking, right? He said, the Lord said, what? My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. And the Lord, everybody say, the Lord said. <laughs> say it one more time. The Lord said. See, the Lord said. Man's days shall be 120 years. And you won't find another place in the Bible where it says how long God said you and I should live. Now, let me ask you this. How many of us, how many of us watching online are preparing to live 120 years? Probably not. Okay, I got one or two hands. Two, couple. Okay, thank you. Papa and Elda, I believe with you. 120. Stretch your hands out. 120. So here, here's, here's the middle ground. I did the math on my confession, my great-great-grandchildren, you know, assuming that my kids don't start earlier than I want them to, and then, you know, the, on the normal, normal progression of things, right? I'd be well over 100 seeing my great-great-grandchildren. Now, here's another thing. I don't want to believe God to live a long life 
if I'm riddled with sickness and pain, I just soon go home then, right? I don't want to, there's no sense in living a long life if you can't enjoy it, right? We can all agree with that, right? So now we have a twofold thing that we need to believe for. We need to believe for long life, but we need to believe for health too. Don't, don't we? Are you listening? How many of y'all can read in here? Let me see your hand. Does the Bible say that God said man's year shall be 120? You think it's possible that we can wrap our heart and mind around that to possibly live longer than 70 years? Huh? 70 is not good enough. Now, in light of end time events, 70 is not good enough because I want some of you to be around assuming that the rapture will happen. I want some of you to be around when the Lord comes back. Meaning, I don't want you to just barely hold on. I want you to be about your father's business working. Amen? Now, there's a lot in the world. Now, I'm, I'm talking Romans 12, too. There's a lot of things in the world. The world says, you know, you got to eat right. I believe in eating right. That's just common sense, right? I believe you got to eat right. The world says you probably need to exercise, right? And nothing wrong with exercising, right? I believe there's all those things are good, and I, they're, they're necessary. But that's not the only way God's going to make you live long. Let me, can I give you guys a revelation this morning? Moses didn't have a gym membership. He walked everywhere. That's true. They did, they did walk everywhere. They kept moving, unlike today. We sit around and watch TV all day. They didn't have a Publix, right? They probably had less garbage to eat than we do, which is, might be a better reason. Hello? The world puts a lot of emphasis on you got to work out seven days a week. You know, it's all good. If you work out, I'm for you. I probably need to get back on it. My Isabella told me last night, Dad, your belly's getting big. <laughs> I'm all for it, right? I want to take care of my body, right? But you don't, you don't see a lot of these guys in the thing. I'm not saying that it's not good. It is good. But I'm saying we need to believe God that there is an element of grace. If we're working only, if we're only working to experience long life and not using our faith and accessing God's grace, then we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. We might be the exception. Maybe you have good genes, naturally speaking. Maybe you're programmed to live a little bit longer. But that won't be the majority of people, right? Right? I don't think the majority of people, naturally speaking, in the world, they're, they're, they're probably predisposed to maybe go down the path where maybe they'll be 70, 80, if, you know, maybe a few years more, okay? But with God, all things are possible. With God, we can believe to live longer. Amen? I feel the seeds getting sown right now. Is anybody listening? Let me give you a couple quick ways, some, some things I wrote down. Because I, I want you to have faith for long life. I don't want you to have to work for long life. If you've got to work for it, it's not necessarily God involved. That's just doing what you can do. Amen? Now, now, I like what people say. You do the natural. God does the supernatural. All that's fine and good. I'm, I'm for it. Amen? But it's not, I'm not only relying on what Darren can do. Amen? I've heard stories. People, they eat perfectly. For a bunch of years of their life, they're in the gym five days a week, 65, they die of a heart attack. I'm for the good stuff. I'm for practical, common sense stuff. You should take care of your body the best of your ability. But that's, that's not the only thing that's, we got to believe God. We need to believe God. I'm going to tell you what, I have been experiencing in this season an overwhelming sense of grace. Amen? Everybody say grace. Grace is God's ability. How every person in the Bible was able to accomplish the will of God, it was not by their ability. It was by the grace of God. And by grace, I mean God's ability. I'm believing for God's ability to be in my life to empower me to live a long and healthy life. Are you listening? Because what, maybe what the cult, are y'all hearing my heart this morning? What the culture says is, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to work out, you got to eat. All that's fine and good, but that's not all. That's not the only thing. You got to believe God. You got to put your faith and trust in God. Because you know what? Naturally speaking, what do you, you guys, some, come on, some of you know more about this than I do. You go to the doctor and they say, oh, they give you these tests and they say, here's how close you are to diabetes, right? They, they, you, now they do these uh, genetic testings where they show you what diseases you're prone to. Come on, some of you don't, maybe the majority of people haven't taken those tests. 
but some of those tests may reveal that you're gonna, you're, you may make it to 65 or 70, you got heart, genetic heart issues. Guess what? We, that's at the point, we don't take just man's advice, we've got we to gotta build our faith on what God's word says. When we access God's word, it's by grace, but we've got to access it by faith. Are you listening to me today? We've got to access what God's word says. We've got, to, we've got to receive the grace from the word of God. God's ability is in his word. But then we've got to act in faith, which means we've got to act like the Bible's true. You know what Laura and I were demonstrating this morning, a confession of faith is simply a declaration of what is. I, I, you, you may say, well, I'm, my body's already riddled with health issues and problems, et cetera, et cetera. But thank God we have God's word. That's when we begin to turn the ship around. That's when we begin to get a hold of God's word, said God's word. God said, man's year shall be 120. David, or whoever wrote that psalm, said rebellious Israel was living 70, if by reason of strength, 80 years. But God, the last time God spoke about how long man should live was 120. Now, you may not want to live to be 120. That's between you and the Lord. You may not want to live to be 100 or 80 or 90. That's between you and the Lord. The Apostle Paul said, I'm in a straight betwixt two, King James. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Paul said, I want to leave to be with the Lord. But he said, it's now needful for me to stay in this body because you need me. How many know the plan of God will keep you on the earth? Now, don't stay on the earth because you think, oh, this is all there is. No, you got to get your faith right. You're, you're staying here and you want to enjoy health and you want to live long because God has a plan for you. Folks, Paul had it right. It's far better to go be with the Lord. Are you listening? I mean, if you had to pick a, make a choice today, if you had to choose today whether you could go or stay, and that was you, today was your only choice, pick to go. But Paul said, I'm, I'm here because you need me. So we, we can establish heaven's better than here, right? The eternity is going to be better than what we're living in. This is a sin-cursed, fallen world. But, everybody say but, if God needs you here, and really, if you're not satisfied, then you shouldn't want to go. And I think there's a satisfaction that comes from pleasing the Lord by doing his will. Amen? Anybody here? So I say with long life, Psalms 91, 16, isn't, it's so interesting. I'm not, I don't have time to get into it now, but Psalms 90 is backslidden Israel, rebellious Israel, living with their secret sins, idol worshiping. And then it says 70 or 90. I mean, it's 70 or 80 years. That's what it says in Psalms 90. Everybody say Psalms 90. Then you cross over to Psalms 91. And that's where it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the shadow of the Almighty, right? That's where, that's where he makes all those powerful confessions. Man, uh, you know, uh, no evil shall befall me, nor any plague come nigh my dwelling. So you got, it's interesting how those Psalms are back to back. You got rebellious, secret sinning Israel, Idol worshiping Israel, now God's angers, whatever, 70, 80 years. But now Psalms 91 crosses over and said, but here's another way to look at it. Whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my strength. Glory to God. Hello. So then it goes on to say, man, the snare, the fowler, all those things. Um, uh, uh, no evil shall befall me, nor any plague come near my dwelling, all those confessions. And then it goes on down to that. At the end of that one, it says, with long life, he's going to satisfy me. With long life, he's going to satisfy me and show me his salvation. Do you see what I'm trying to say, Psalms 90 and 91? 90, they're not following God. They're living seven. 90, they're not following God, 70 to 80. 91, they're following God, resting under God's mighty shadow, walking in the will of God. Then he says, with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. Isn't that powerful? Come on. Long life. Long life is a promise from the Lord for those who put him first and seek him. And don't get that mixed up. That is not a statement of works. 
That's a statement of choice. You're not working to get long life. You're choosing long life. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm listening. Number one, wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. Wisdom. We, we've, some of us have heard some of the passages. Can you give me a couple more minutes? We're good. Proverbs 3.16, I'm going to give you a few points here. Wisdom, faith for long life. Everybody say faith for long life. Wisdom, for Proverbs 3.16, it says she offers you long life. I'm talking about wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. What does wisdom do? This is one of the characteristics of wisdom, right? Wisdom offers you, or I'm sorry, long life. She offers you long life in her right hand. Riches and honor <laughs> in her left don't you want to just give wisdom a big hug? I mean, long life in one hand, riches and honor in the next. I mean, give me a hug, wisdom. I want it all, right? But if you read in the, in the Proverbs where he talks about those who have not chosen wisdom, it said they fall in their destitute place, and then they cry aloud and say, uh, I'm sorry, wisdom cries aloud and says, oh, man, this is so good. I'm getting a hold of something right now. Wisdom cries aloud in the street and said, I tried to get you in. I tried to help you, now you're in bad shape, and I ain't coming. That's what wisdom said, right? Hello? Wisdom is crying out in the streets all the time. And what does wisdom say? How long will you simple people love your ways? Come on, what does the word say? How long will you simple ones love your simple ways? Wisdom said, let me, folks, folks wisdom is not whispering in the street. Wisdom is not hiding around the corner you where you barely see him. The Bible says wisdom is hollering out in the city square and saying, please come to me, come follow me. And it, isn't it interesting, but it, it's, it, it says we're going to choose our own simple ways and not go the way of wisdom. Hello? Offers long life in her right hand, riches and honor in her left. Proverbs 9.11. Wisdom, everybody say wisdom. Wisdom will what? Oh, God, I love the word of God so much. Wisdom will multiply your days and add, not minutes, years to your life. Now, somebody said, well, what is wisdom? Well, I, my definition I use for wisdom is, you know, applied knowledge, right? But I, I like to say, let, let me read you this quickly. I say this, wisdom applied knowledge, but I say it this way. Wisdom is not just getting information, but it's hearing from God. Wisdom is hearing God's knowledge and applying what we learn from him. Wisdom. There's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun, right? That's when that what the scripture says. Anything that's from, from wisdom is from God, right? Wisdom is applying what we learn from him. Amen. You know, the Holy Spirit's called the spirit of wisdom. In Corinthians, it says Jesus was made unto us wisdom. In the work of redemption, Jesus became the wisdom of God to our spirits. We have, did you not realize, Paul said, do you not know, you, your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit? The full wisdom, you know, how many think Solomon was pretty wise? He said he was wise, one of the wisest kings. All that wisdom that Solomon had from the Lord is in Christ and in you now. Laura and I have been praying in the Spirit more because I, I think praying in the Spirit releases the wisdom of God. You're praying mysteries unto God. I think you're releasing God's wisdom in your life. Right? The Holy Ghost is in there. Oh. Pull, pull a little bit more. Everybody say wisdom. Wisdom multiplies your days. Wisdom adds years to your life. The spirit of wisdom and knowledge is in you now. You got to pray and pray in the spirit to get it out. You got to declare, I have the wisdom of God. Hello, Christ has been made wisdom unto me. I'm, I'm sorry, am I boring some of you? Oh, I just thought maybe some of you just wanted to leave the earth early. Do we not want to live long? Everybody say wisdom. I had, I had a sense that people were thinking, man, what am I going to eat for lunch? How about some long life? Wisdom. Wisdom brings long life. The wisdom of God is in your spirit now. You got to let it out. You got to access it. Let the wisdom of God pour out of your heart. Amen. Look at Proverbs uh, 12, 13. 
The wicked are ensnared by the trans... Uh Uh-oh, wrong page. Sorry. Everybody say wisdom. Number two, the fear of the Lord. Somebody say the fear of the Lord. Proverbs, I'm talking about long life. Everybody say, I want to live long. Proverbs 10, 27, it says the fear of the Lord lengthens one's life. The fear of the Lord. But the years of the wicked are cut short. Fear of the Lord. You know there's wicked believers? They don't follow God. That doesn't mean they're a terrible person. They're just not following the will, the will of God for their life, the wisdom of God. Such a thin line between works and th- the grace, you know, because it's not, you're not working to get, but God's principles are true, whether we work them or not. It's grace that we have access to the word of God. Does that mean I have to study to show myself approved? Yeah, it helps, but you got to let it be grace. Don't work thinking you're going to get something. God gives you the opportunity to make this stuff happen, right? It's a thin line. Proverbs 22, 4, true humility. And the fear of the Lord leads to what? Riches, honor, and what? True humility. True humility and fear of the Lord leads to riches, honor, and long life. Psalms 85, 9. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Whoa, where'd that come from? Psalms 85, 9. Surely his salvation is near, I'm sorry, yeah, surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, so our lamb will be filled with his glory. Everybody say salvation. See, I'll, I'll, with long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. We need saving from leaving this earth earlier than we should. God's salvation is near those who fear him. Amen. How many wish some of your loved ones in the Lord that were still, had stuff to still offer you and I, how many wish some of them were still here? Amen? I mean, we, we, need, we need those, what we'd call, the scripture calls the patriarchs. We need them to live longer and impart more wisdom. How many times said, man, I wish, how many of y'all have said, man, I wish mama was still here. Wish daddy was still here. Man, I just look, wish grandpa was still here. How many of y'all, you sit, man, they used to just sit and help me. They'd encourage me or they'd lift me up. They'd give me wisdom when I had a problem, right? How many have said that before? That's what we're saying about a lot of you. We need you to be around for a long time. Amen? Okay, quick, two, two more quick ones. Number three, the tongue. Oh, no, let me read this about fear. Everybody say fear. The fear of the Lord, somebody said that gave a definition of fear, said it was reverential awe, reverencing, standing in awe of God. I say this, fear of the Lord, the fear of God is to be constantly reminded of his ultimate power and glory. This is so good. Listen to this. The fear of the Lord is to be constantly reminded of his ultimate power and glory. The fear of God. The fear of the Lord is to be constantly reminded of his ultimate power and glory. To listen to him when he speaks. Any of y'all ever fear your mom or dad? They come in with that paddle? What do you do after you get a whipping? You listen. Did we not learn anything from our upbringing? You get a whipping, you know next time, you better listen, son. Did you fear? You had a, some of you may have been afraid of your, your parents, but when you had a reverential awe, you feared, which means you had a respect for them. You had a healthy respect. I remember one of my friends growing up, man, he, his dad came, came out of the house and something, man, he had that belt. Man, I never saw somebody. It was like a cartoon. Jumped out of that bed, walked on the air to go outside and get in the yard and go to work. What did that guy have? He had a reverential awe of his parents, his, his father. What did he do? He had a respect for him. He listened to him when he spoke, right? You say a fear of the Lord. If you interview most believers around the world, you ask them if the Lord speaks to you, do you do what he says? Um, Maybe. That's not fear. Are you listening? That's not a reverential awe. That's not fear. Somebody said fear, if you fear the Lord, you'll live long. What does that mean? That means you do what the Lord's telling you to do. Come on, I, I could sit here, I know. Oh, help me, Jesus. Thinking back on that Psalms 90. See, they weren't, they weren't walking in fear of the Lord. That's why they were dying at 70 and 80. They weren't listening when the Lord was speaking. It's mighty quiet in this Baptist church this morning. Hello? They weren't listening. 
That's why they were dying early. The fear of the Lord, right? Long life. It comes with long life. So we, the fear of the Lord is to reverently listen to him and obey his word, to listen to his voice. Uh, um, oh, this is another good one. When he, to listen to the voices that God brings into our life. You know how many, as you know, I feel like God set Laura and I as pastors here, as leaders, and we're not on a power trip. And we, we, we're not going to rule over you. We're not going to tell you. You know, we'll, we'll try to lead you and instruct you by the way of God, by the way of the Lord. How many of you believe when God sets a pastor in your life, a leader, you know, if he's in the right place at the right time, you, you should have some respect for your, your leaders, right? We have a five-fold ministry gift coming here, and they're releasing the word of the Lord. You should have some fear as to some connection, some awe. God's speaking to me right now. But how many, how many good God, fe- good God loving people, not necessarily God fearing, <laughs> how many good people that love God? Never take what their pastor says to heart. There's a lot of people, they'll leave here today and say, oh, that was a good time. Wasn't that good worship? Oh, wasn't that good? They won't remember a word that the Lord spoke through their pastor. With long life, long life comes through a fear of listening to the voices God puts in your life. I, I sense people are getting restless. I hear the Dixie grill calling me, baby. The fear of the Lord. All right, I'll have to finish this another time. How many of y'all want to live long on the earth? Amen? Somebody say glory to God. You know, with long life. Everybody say long life. You know, uh, we demonstrated earlier. Uh, you can come on up, Travis. The tongue. 1 Peter 3.10, he who loves life, for he who wants to love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. See, I'm not telling you what uh, uh, doctor, I watched Dr. Oz last night. I saw something about some diet after my daughter told me I was getting chunky. I said, maybe I need to go on a diet. So uh, I, was, I saw this thing on Dr. Oz. You know, I, I'm sure he gives good advice. You know, he's, a, he's making a lot of money off of you and I. I know that much. He has all these guys on and probably charges them a bunch of money. And then he probably has all these connections with all these products he's selling, right? But I believe you can get some good advice. But you can listen to Dr. Oz's every everything he's putting out, that's not going to guarantee you long life. You don't get faith from what the world's saying. Now, it could be good knowledge, could be, you know, there's some wisdom involved in it, I believe all that, but you need faith to live long. Faith only comes from hearing God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Do you receive what I'm putting out today? With long life, he satisfies me. And shows me his salvation. I, w- I want to believe God to live a long life. Why don't you bow your heads this morning? My dad used to say, uh, the heart can only stand what the, I don't know, what is it? The heart can only receive what the butt can stand. <laughs> you know, you, amen, something along them lines. You got to get as much in as you can when, when, they're, when we're connected, right? Praise the Lord. I just want to ask you with your eyes close this morning, your heads bowed, just to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. I need some of you to stay around. And really, you, I didn't say this, and it really it wasn't even in my notes, but the Holy Spirit kind of prompted me last night. Doing the will of God will, will keep you. Amen? That's why we got to be careful not to conform to this world. There's going to be a day where the church is going to rise up and really a, a powerful and glorious demonstration. And you, you want to be a part of that. God preserved David's life. All those battles he fought. All that time Saul was chasing him. All that the, the turmoil he had in his family. God preserved the apostle Paul. Man, just, he, he should have, you know, died probably way earlier than he did. Right? But he knew, Paul knew when his time came. He said, I'm like a drink offering ready to be poured out. He knew his time was coming to an end. But I believe Paul finished his course with joy. Somebody said, yeah, what about the martyrs? Did they die too young? Listen, man, I believe it's a calling. There's an anointing sometimes to be a martyr. You know, if you leave early because you you stand up for your faith and you give up your life for the cause of the gospel, praise God, you're, you're getting where everybody wants to be. But I think for the large majority of us that are just serving the kingdom and living every day, 
to do the will of God, to take the things of God seriously. I believe God's not going to let anything come against you if you're standing in the middle of his will. I believe that with all my heart. Somebody says, yeah, but that one pastor, that one minister, he died. Yeah, but you don't know his heart. You don't know if he was in rebellion. He, I heard Brother Hagin gave his testimony, said he, he was sitting in a church service in total rebellion to God. This before he started traveling. He went and started traveling. Then he said it was too hard to travel. And he said, I'm coming off the field and I'm going back to pastoring. He said he was sitting, he'd made up his mind. He's sitting in the service on his way home. Listen to another guy preach. Had a heart attack and fell over in the pew. They brought him over to the parsonage. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to him and prompted his wife at the same time. And they walked over. His wife walked over, had tears in her eyes, said the Holy Ghost already prompted her. They both, in that thing, as he's on his deathbed, the Holy Ghost prompted them, and they both repented. And they said, Lord, we made up our mind that we're, we're going to go back to pastoring because it was too hard. And he said, <laughs> he repented. He said, Lord, that's not your will. He said, I'm, see, that's all. That's wisdom. That's fear. That's getting your, your confession right. It's all those things. A reverential awe. See, he had enough sense to realize, I'm not here to do my will. I'm going to do the will of God. See, when you're outside of the will of God, there's no guarantee that you're going to live long. But I believe there is a promise in the will of God. I believe there is. And I'm telling you, I see in this end days, there's going to be a hardcore group of folks that are about their father's business. And I, I think there's some long life in that. Amen? If the Lord tarries. Are you listening this morning? Brother Hagin said he repented. He said the Lord instantly touched his body, lifted him up off the bed, and he said he went on and did the will of God. Had probably another 40, 50 years of ministry after that. Powerful. Told us testimony how he lived in divine health all those years. Amen. Glory to God. With long life, he'll satisfy you and show you his salvation. Long life. Oh, glory to God. But if that's you today, amen, just make your heart right with the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm gonna, I want to live a long and prosperous life, but, but I want to be prosperous for your kingdom. Amen. Has everybody received that today? Say that with me. Say, long life. Long life. I'm going to see my great-great-grandchildren doing the will of God from their heart. Amen. Long life, he satisfies me. Grandmommy, I need you to stay around. How many of y'all want grandmommy to stay around? I want Miss Amanda to be around for a long time. Amen? But Pastor Frank, too. <laughs> Can't leave him out, right? Some of you grandparents, you need to stay around for a while. Get your mouth right. I'm going to say I'm going to live long and prosper. Like, is that from Star Trek? Live long and prosper. I can't, I can't do it. Sorry. Praise God. Stand up on your feet. Say it one more time. With long life, he satisfies me and shows me his salvation. Amen. I love you and I bless you. Have a great rest of the day. Be blessed. Enjoy time with your family. We'll see you on Wednesday night.